वंदितु सोब सिद्धि हाँ सर मंगलाचरण आप करेंगे सर या बच्चों से करवाऊ सर बच्चों से करवाई ठीक नहीं तो हाँ। सर, सर की गाथा बोल रहे थे हाँ सर आप आप करवाइए सर अच्छा नमो सिद्धाण नमो नमो वज्रायाण नमो लोये सव साहुन मंगल भगवान वीरो मंगल गौतम गणी मंगल कुंद कुंदारियो जैन धर्म मंगल सर्व मंगल मंगल्यम सर्व कल्याण कारकम प्रधान सर्वधर्माण जैन जयतु शासन वंदित सब सिद्धे दुवचल मनोवगम गदिम पत्ते वो छामी समय केवली नमः समय समय स्वामुभुत्या चकासते भावाय भावाय सर्व भावांतर थैंक यू सो मच सर i i'm i'm totally lost with words i don't know from where to start because there is so much to tell yeah. you about samay sir about sir and about my experience with samay sir and with sir so i'll not say anything and yeah. uh, i'll welcome sir and uh, let him do all the talking and we'll all listen it's been a wonderful journey in the department of genealogy with sir introducing us to samay sir and samay sir to us and ever since then we have been only growing and uh, we are so inspired and we feel so humbled with all the experience uh, and uh, sir has given us the opportunity to uh, publish the books uh, on samay sar pravachan sar niyam sar and bhagwati aradhana that he has uh, uh, rendered it in english and you all have the copies of all the four books and uh, when you listen to him you will know the importance of samay sar how it has changed the lives of people okay and uh, this is about sir i don't you can read his by the title it is all given in the books that you all have he retired as an economist and uh, he worked with world bank and indian bank and now he is in mangalayatan for the past 10 12 years 13 years or so guiding people okay and uh, he's he's an alumni of the department he's done his second phd in jainism after being a phd in economics and uh, we are also fortunate to be his students and forever we'll be indebted to him so this is about him and i would like to tell sir about the energy of the class the audience that is there before you uh, there are 21 of them in the first year and around uh, 20 of them in the second year and 10 faculty members and six phd students so okay. this is the strength of the department right now and the first years will be studying samay sar in the second semester and their interest to listen from you there's a demand from them so we requested you to arrange uh, uh, to please deliver these lectures so at as of now we have 2 hours on samay sar 2 hours on pravachan sar 2 hours on niyam sar and maybe one or two hours on 363 pakhandi math 363 divisions of mithyatva schools so these are the lectures lined up with sir and uh, thursdays and saturdays we'll schedule these lectures as long as you all and sir all uh, and sir can give us the time and after that as and when whenever is required by you sir is always ready there to help us so this is it sir and over to you so one hour or two hours <coughs> how you would like to take uh you can discuss with the class and accordingly you can proceed sir uh welcome yes, sir when you are from yes, the department i welcome yes, all student number 1 all of you please keep yourself muted dear if i mute then sir will also get muted so all of you please mute yourself do not disturb the class and uh, if you if you don't understand anything please raise your hand and then let sir ask you what you want and then you can interact with the speaker over to you sir 
So thank you very much, madam, for giving me the opportunity to share some of the views on Samesa. Uh, today lecture I'm planning on uh, uh, what I call as approach to Samesa. Uh, what I thought is that uh, today I will talk about uh, Kund Kunda Acharya, then the knowledge approach to Samesa, and then the real and associated viewpoints, this Nishche and Veva. Because without these three things, uh, it's not, uh, not very easy to understand the text and uh, realize the importance and ultimately move towards the goal that has been prescribed in this particular text or in Jain philosophy. So it, it, it is, I, I'm not taking some gathas and like that, okay, if some time permits, or if you have any questions on any particular gatha, you can uh, raise that question or talk it later or now or whatever it is. I will take a general view of how samasar is to be understood and uh, how it is unique and very, very different from all the scriptures that we have in Jain philosophy. It is unique, marvelous, uh, uh, uncomparable, unfathomable, whatever adjective we use. Those adjectives do not really describe the uh, depth of Samasa and the way in which uh, Acharya has gone on sharing his views on how to experience the soul. So these three things we'll talk in the next two hours and like that. Um, we'll talk about two things first, about Kund Kund and the knowledge approach. Then if you have question answers, we can stop. And then after that, in the second part of the lecture today, we'll talk on real and associated viewpoints, Nishchan and Vevar. Because what he talks about Nishchan and Vevar is very different than what we are understand. And, uh, he was a very different kind of a person. That's why we have to know a little bit about him. Although about Kund Kund, we can cover a lot of, uh, in my in our book also, uh, some small introduction is given about Acharya Kund Kund. But I will take a few points only here to uh, create a background and, a, uh, and a, a, a setting where we can understand Kund Kund. Okay, so I will just start with the first one then talk about the second one later. You see, one of the things that is talked about in uh, Jain philosophy is that what is the objective of Jain philosophy? Why, why all these principles, all these uh, code of conducts and so many things are there. So can we describe in one sentence or in one word, what is the objective of Jain philosophy? Or what is the objective of our life? Or what should be the objective of our life? So that is the first point. Actually, if you look at uh, from a, a Jain philosophical angle, uh, there is no objective of life. Okay? Unless we set a goal for ourselves. Otherwise, from time immemorial or from anadikal, infinite times in the past and infinite times to come in future, the soul will migrate from one life to another life. You don't have to do anything. It is a, there is a definite sequence and soul will go from one birth to another, will commit certain karmas and those karmas will lead to certain phases of life or char gatis or whatever you call four modes of existence and that's how the things will go. So then what do we do? Do we have, what should be the objective of this life? So because the universe is not created by any God or something like that, it is ever existing and eternal. So then what is the objective of life that is set forth very, very clearly in Samasa? And so the first line that I've written is, here is that Samasar says or reveals that the logical way or the only thing to be done in life is to realize the soul or consciousness. 
once we realize that I am a soul, and particularly when we'll talk later about pure soul, once we realize that it is so, then you have embarked on a path for Jainism. Then you embark on the path taught by what our Lord Mahavira in the present times, and uh, you think our Mahavira rather. And uh, that's how, if at all we are serious about life, and we feel that we are a Jain, or we want to follow Jainism, or we want to understand Jainism, whichever way it is, you need not be Jain to understand this, but anybody can understand. So the first and foremost, and the only objective that we can set for ourselves is uh, sorry. Sir, आपके आवाज थोड़ी धीरे है सर थोड़ा सा वॉल्यूम चाहिए सर ओके 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 कैन यू हियर नाउ बेटर ओके स्टिल नहीं अभी भी नहीं है नो यू आर ऑन म्यूट सर कैन यू हियर बेटर नाउ और शुड आई What should I do? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Generally, I speak a little slowly and like that. But anyway, so the foremost, the and the only objective of life is to realize the pure soul. Okay. So experiencing the soul is the only objective of this life. or for any being for that point not only for human beings for any uh, any mode of existence okay. but of course one should be in a position to realize the pure soul okay. so anyway so samasa reveals that logical way to realize the pure soul okay. it doesn't in a haphazard manner or in random manner it doesn't say that you realize the soul but systematically from one chapter to another chapter Uh, how to realize the pure soul has been built into this uh, text okay it is so the importance is so much that it is called shabda brahma god in words okay in jain philosophy as you all know do not there is no incarnation of gods and like that avatar hota nahi like some other people talk about it but here the god has descended in terms of words okay the siddha parmeshti how they are or the or the arhant how the knowledge is revealed to him that that is the, the samasa so it is god in words okay god has descended in terms of words in this particular scripture okay? in this particular text so there can be no better way of ex- describing samasa than this uh, simple one word that is a god in words or shabd brahm in in words shabd brahm means bhagwan so in words it has been say in a statue or idol no? it is in in terms of uh, whatever idol it has been car- incarnated or in terms of a picture no? if there is a picture or a photo of mahavira bhagwan or whatever any tirthankar then it is a incarnation in terms of a painting or pictures and like that and then this is in terms of that it is so it is a it contains secrets of teachings and uh, then uh, all all the uh, bodiless liberation and so on so it prescribes the total way to realize the pure soul and to achieve the liberation this book uh, on samasa delineates the eternal nature of the soul or pure soul is a very unique text where the eternal nature is more emphasized than uh, the temporal or uh, the modifications that take place in one's life so it refers to the essence of substance soul substance it shines as the most precious gem in the world of jain literature ever since written by the kunkunda acharya about 2000 years ago so this text has been written 2000 years ago uh, it is in old name was the sans uh, samasar prabhrat which means that uh, it is a gift from the great uh, 
played gift or whatever from a saint who was completely detached, Jain Acharya, for attainment of happiness and bliss. Why do we experience the soul? Because we want to experience the happiness. So experiencing the soul or experiencing the happiness, both are the same thing. And so that is the objective with which we should study this and enjoy the scripture so that uh, uh, bliss or whatever happiness or experience of the soul uh, manifest in our own life. All generations of Acharyas, monks, thinkers, writers have proudly declared themselves to be indebted to him and there are a number of commentaries on the text. So I will show you a small table later where we can see that how since last 2000 years each great uh, Acharya or each Jain scholar, or those who have written Jain uh, scriptures or even stutis and all those things, they have expressed themselves indebted to Acharya Kunkun. That is, they feel that most of them who has written like on script, spiritual matters, they feel that uh, they have learned only from Kunda Kunda Acharya. And uh, there is no one like him ever born. And, and sometimes people say that never be born in Pancham Kal again. So there has not been a, a monk like Kundukund and there will not be a monk like Kundukund in this fifth era on this earth as where do we live. So this is some part of introduction about Kundukund. Then another point I wanted to emphasize was that his life is very small where here I'm describing. You can read more in the book and like that or some other books. He, in the previous life, he started as a cow herd and herder or whatever. And then he became the greatest acharya in the next life. So in the previous life, he has a desire to pursue the path of knowledge. And ultimately he was born later on uh, in South somewhere and Kondu Kondu village, this year, which is in the border of Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. And uh, that's how his story starts. Point is not the knowing the story, but the point is that the desire to know something, desire to know, desire to grow in knowledge was enkindled or kindled in him when he saw a Jain Acharya in a jungle when he was uh, uh, working as a cow. I mean, Gayan Charata, he was a cow herder. And, like that. and that is one type. Second type of this importance or Kundakund can be understood is in terms of inscriptions on Chandragiri about uh, Kundakunda Acharya, that how he was so influential and uh, how uh, his preachings have changed the life of so many monks. And then, of course, uh, a famous thing about Kundakunda Acharya is that he visited Vidya Kshetra, you know where is Vidya Kshetra, and uh, Jambudip has a Vidya Kshetra, then other also, uh, other islands or Dweep also has a Jambudip, and then Ghatki Khand and Pushkradip, they all Vidya Kshetra. So he went to that uh, in the east of uh, what are uh, Jambudip, and uh, then he stayed there and listened to Sri Mandir Paramatma. And then he came back to Vidyakshetra. I mean, they came back to Bharakshetra. So what I want to say is by this statement is that he has heard directly the Tirthankar Sri Mandir and then understood the Jain philosophy. This, the, it, it, his name came in the what are teachings of uh, Tirthankar uh, Mandir, and that's how he gained so much importance and he's supposed to go to uh, Videkshetra from uh, the small hill that is there near Chennai and, uh, and that's how this that hill also has become very important and uh, uh, he's going there and to become very important and there are a lot of stories how he went and uh, who was the king of Kerala was there to receive him. 
when the chaturmas was coming to an end but anyway he went there and uh, realized those things and came back and then supposed to have written the scriptures that's important whatever scriptures that kunkum has written supposed to be so many few are available so uh, 84 or so he is supposed to have written and a few are available anyway so he has whatever writing are there it is the ref- there is a reflection of uh, uh, teachings of uh, bhagwan teaching of tirthankara we all don't have access to tirthankaras directly but he had a direct access to tirthankara he stayed there for one week and then listened to uh, parmatma very carefully and then having come back he wrote uh, this samay sar prachan sar niyam sar and so many things then as i said earlier historical influence is so much that each of the uh, greatest uh, acharyas now in the last 2000 years have uh, inherited from him the spiritual side of jain philosophy then he is remembered his importance is so much that he is remembered uh, in the mangala charan no? that mangalam bhagwan viru mangalam so after mahavir and then uh, gautam gandhar he is remembered as the third person there is a story that how this uh, uh, mangala charan came into existence and there is a feeling or there is a recording that uh, after he came back from videkshetra then the the acharyas or whoever was there they realized that uh, uh, the depth of kund kund acharya study <coughs> is uh, very much and then that's how it has to be uh, remember that way or in other words it is a very simple way of sitting saying that almost after about 600 years of uh, uh, 600 plus years of uh, mahavirs in nirvana after that the very influential acharya who revived the jain philosophy an interest in jain philosophy and that to in a spiritual manner and telling the crux of the jain philosophy that's how the kunkund acharya is remembered you see there are two uh, two dharas or two two ways of uh, telling the jain philosophy one was what is reflected in shatkandagam where in six parts dharsena acharya preached to uh, other acharyas and then pushpadant and bhutbali have written those two great texts i mean six texts and so one one way of establishing is uh, those kind of things but they are still basically talking more on karma of course they talk about atma and pure soul and right but uh, they are more concentrating on say uh, what happens to karma what is the life of a mom can so many things besides the other things so they are great text by themselves but what i'm saying is that the spiritual side is not so much emphasized in that and they were not exclusively devoted to spiritual side but the samasar and the writings of kunkunda they are ex- he he is supposed to have been in the tradition of what is known as gundhar acharya there was two uh, great acharyas before this writing that is about 2000 years plus one was dharsena acharya and another was gundhar acharya so in the bhutbali and pushpadant wrote in the tradition of uh, dharsena acharya why uh, kund kund wrote in the tradition gundhar acharya so that's how the things are there and that's what becomes very important so it's a rare, rare acharya but that is bomb and there may not be anything like him this some quote just for understanding uh, what is written in some of the script i mean some of the inscriptions and like that about 600 years ago of lord mahavira's nirvan acharya kund kund reestablish his teachings with pristine grandeur depth and spirit and it is being continuously revered by all seekers of truth since the last 2000 years even inscriptions on all the idols of digambara tradition bear his name that is all the idols 
that are established in Panchkalyan or whatever, when temples are built, the idols, each idol bears the name of Kunkunacha. That's a tradition. And uh, so he assumes so much importance okay, that his name is written with each of the idols. Okay. Then the Devsen Acharya, he writes that had Sri Padmana Nandinath or Sri Kunkund Acharya not enlightened with the divine knowledge and so gained from the Tirthankara Sri Mandar Swami of Videkshetra, who, how could we know the, how could the monks know the true path? That is, monks will not have the opportunity to know the true path. So it is only due to uh, Sri Kunkund that uh, we could have the real path to enlightenment as far as this process is concerned. Then there are other teachings also in Gomteshwar, in Chandagiri mountain also, the inscription is there, that he was the most accomplished monk among accomplished monks, and uh, he, whatever, hummed and took shelter like bees under the lotus, because his name was Kund, so that's how it is said. Then he was the pure soul who consecrated the teachings of Tirthankaras in this Bharakshetra, who will not have their who will not have their reference to reverence to such a great personality on the earth. So that's how it is written in the Chandagiri mountain in Gomteshwara in Karnataka. So these few quotes just to emphasize that uh, how great he was. Okay, and why I'm writing or telling you about is that we have to understand him in that context. If we don't understand how he lived and in what conditions he wrote and uh, what are the factors influencing his writing? Maybe he will not get to that much, uh, uh, whatever, that much influenced by his writings. A few examples are given here that uh, in each century, I have taken only one example here, that in each century there was some great writer who wrote something about Kundakunda or he said that uh, I am indebted to Kundakunda. So, Jin Chandra Acharya who was a teacher of Kunkund. Uh, he also realized that uh, Kunkunda is a great person and like that. Then in the second century, whatever, uh, Kunkunda himself wrote 84 books, including Samesa. Then uh, uh, Uma Swami was supposed to have been in second or third century. His famous text, Tattvar Sutra. Tattvar Sutra is based on so many gathas of Kunkunacha. So he, he was a disciple of uh, Kundakunacha. And that's why Tatvar Sut, which is a very famous text, which all people read and all sex in Jain philosophy, it is considered the basic text also that was written by Uma Swami. And if somebody studies very thoroughly, then one can find that uh, whatever words have been, or the sutras have been used by Uma Swami, Kundakunda has given those sutras somewhere in others. But instead of a pure, full gatha, uh, Uma Swami has written those things in uh, sutras, in a small uh, way he has expressed it. Then Devanandi Acharya in 4th century, who was the Acharya of Nandi Sangha, and then he was also written about him. Pujjapada Acharya, very famous text, Sarvar Siddhi, uh, which is a commentary on Uma Swami's work, that also you know, Kundkund uh, influenced his writings. Then Yogindu Dev, Akalamka Dev, Hari Bhadra, Veer Sen Swami, and Gunabhadra Acharya. Like that, there is a list of so many Acharyas and the famous books they have written by them. Then Amrachandra Acharya was one of the very well known person. Uh, 1000 years after Kundakund, Amrachandra Acharya wrote commentary on uh, works of Kundakund, and those commentaries a real source of uh, description of what Kundakunda Kund Acharya has to say. Then another great Acharya who made commentaries on Kundakunda works was Jason Acharya. Jason Acharya Samesar is also very famous. Then Padmamal Dev who wrote commentary on Niyamsar. Then Jin Chandra Acharya who also wrote Tatars, Shrutvartika and like that. And, uh, Shrutmani or Vamdeva Acharya, who wrote Paramagam Saran, Bhav Sangra. Then Gyan Bhushan, 
guru tattva gyan taringai and like that pandit rajmal ji in the modern 16th century and who wrote same sarkala she was so influenced by readings of uh, amar chandra acharya and like that and same sa that he wrote an independent uh, commentary on kalash that was kalash means po- poetry in a, in a poetic manner what uh, amar chandra acharya wrote so then rajmal of course very famous one of the student i have is doing phd on rajmal pandit here and uh, same rupchand ji who was a uh, and banarasi das both uh, were very famous banarasi was that's supposed to been taught by rupchand and banarasi das wrote later samesa natak so like that uh, so many books are there and uh, the few of them i just mentioned it so you know how big correct is kund kund acharya is a link in all the uh, jain scriptures particularly in the gambar traditions so he wrote uh, something like 84 things and like that so much so that uh, people say that uh, his neck was not straight because of writing all the times and like that uh, acclaim by people then as kalikal sarvaj he was supposed to have known as kalikal sarvaj though there are no sarvaj the omniscient or arant in this present era but he was termed because of his writings as if he was a sarvaj so known as kalikal sarvaj the omniscient of the present era who of course as we said earlier ranked third after bhagwan mahavir and gautam gandhar Kunda Kunda Acharya has attained samadhi at the age of 96 at Kundadiri in Karnataka. So, like that, he is uh, uh, historical importance. Then, if you have to look at some some principles, okay, there are so many principles, but I thought some basic principle that uh, Kunda Kunda taught in his scriptures was that all individuals are equal, all souls are equal. and all souls souls have independent existence and uh, similarly all are unhappy due to ignorance of the self that's why the knowledge approach and worldly things and all can become happy if uh, they know the self if everybody understand the soul then the unhappiness will disappear in life then of course the jain philosophy particularly says that uh, god does not create regulate or destroy the world god is a neutral observer gyayak and has revealed the laws that govern our life god has not created tirthankaras have not created laws this is a famous thing all of you might be knowing but nevertheless i thought i should emphasize that point if somebody is missing some point somewhere that god does not create or regulate or destroy the world it is a neutral observer gyata drashta as we call it and uh, but what they have done is they have revealed the laws that govern our life and that's the greatest thing they have done and all substances behave in the sequential manner as per their nature that is every substance is regulated by its own nature all modifications that take place is because of its own nature and nothing else any soul can attain salvation if science of detachment bhed gyan and meditation is practiced to realize or experience the pure self anybody can attain forget about bhavya and abhavya at the moment but uh, in terms of the potential everybody is capable of achieving the same they do not achieve, achieve that's a different point one need to discriminate between innate cause and instrumental cause the real and associated factors and so on this is how the third part of my lecture will talk about today, that one has to understand this vyavahar and nischay very well if there is a misunderstanding about nischay and vyavahar then one will not be able to really appreciate what kun kunda has taught and how his teachings are very different than the traditional jain teachings or the jain scriptures so one has to discriminate between innate cause and instrumental cause instrumental means external things which is known as vyavahar and innate cause means what is known as nischay the fundamental cause the real and associate factors the real is also another name for nischay 
and associate factors is named for uh, uh, Vavara, because those are external factors which are associated with the soul in the mundane existence. Soul is more powerful. The, the, the theme that emerges in Kun Kunda's writing is, or in Samesar also that way, soul is more powerful than the karma. That is, sometimes people say karmas are more powerful. Okay, Nobody can escape karma. Yes, nobody can escape karmas. But if one who realizes the soul, one who has understand the nature of the soul, he can, he is more powerful. The soul is in fact, more powerful than the karmas. And uh, that's why it seems the letter seems more powerful in the absence of knowledge of the self. Karmas are powerful so long as we don't have the knowledge. But once we acquire the knowledge of the soul, then knowledge becomes more powerful than the karmas. So the traditional saying that karma is very powerful and all we should do to eliminate karma is not like that. Kun Kun says no. Soul is more powerful you realize the soul, then karma will be there. Away. That is Samasar. That is all the scriptures that he has written. A very simple example we often give, and it is very famous in Jain philosophy, that if there is a darkness, you don't have to fight with the darkness. You don't have to eliminate darkness. You just light the lamp and the darkness will go away. In the same way, you kindle the desire, okay, or you light the lamp of pure soul okay, and the darkness will go away. You don't have to do any separate act. There is only one act of uh, lighting the lamp or lighting the bulb or whatever you call it. And then one act has two things. Light also takes place and the darkness goes away. In the same way, once we realize the pure soul, darkness will go away automatically. There is no need for a separate effort to uh, eliminate the darkness. So in the same way, there is no need of uh, eliminating karmas directly. <coughs> the moment one realizes the pure soul, karmas will get eliminated automatically. So this is how the real path to uh, moksha uh, takes place after knowing these kind of things, nothing else. So this is a thing which will come again and again in Samasa, any other scriptures also, that soul is more powerful, infinitely more powerful than karmas. And that's why uh, we should know more about the soul rather than more about karmas. That doesn't mean we should not know about karmas. Karmas are important factor in life, but they remain important if we, we are ignorant of the soul and they become very weak once we have the knowledge of the soul. So that's how it has to be understood. Uh, uh, just one second. So. I hope you all are noting down. You can take screenshot of the presentations and copy later on. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Very good lecture, ma'am. Meet your juniors, Bharat Bhai. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> this is this is Dr. Bharat, sir from Michigan. He's completed his uh, MA genealogy. He's doing his Prakrit diploma. He's doing his Parmagam third year. He's a doctor by profession. Thank you, madam. He's Thank you. This juggling time. juggling between all the odd timing between US <laughs> and India time. With your blessing. With your blessing. Okay. Yes, sir. Some disturbance. Okay, so now how Kundi Kunda has approached uh, the philosophy or Jain philosophy or he, what is his approach? So if we look at these five great texts that he has written, the approach in Panchastika is he's talking more of six substances. Oh, sorry, it's in Hindi slide. Sorry. Okay, 
is talking about uh, uh, six substances and nine tattvas. And uh, in uh, Pravachan Sari talks about uh, knowledge and the knowable, in, in that the entire universe is uh, covered in that one. So there also it is a approach is in terms of knowledge. But knowledge and knowable, two things are described in Pravachan Sari. And in Samesa, it is uh, talks more of pure soul only. And that approach is only of, in terms of developing an insight with drashti uh, into the subject. And then in Niyamsar, of course, uh, he says that uh, cause and effect type of relationships. And uh, that's how we should approach the path to moksha. And uh, in Astapad, of course, whatever wrong beliefs that we have, have been uh, uh, clarified in the Astapavdi, in eight chapters. So, point I'm trying to say is that his, not, his approach in all the scriptures or all the writings he had, he had a knowledge as one of the uh, ways to deal with this uh, approach of uh, uh, approach to the moksha, or the path to the moksha. Uh, and that's why he said that all these five, four has to be done. Okay. So, that my first part that I wanted to cover today, in terms of uh, the background, the setting, the times, greatness of Kunkundacharya, all those things I try to mention briefly. And uh, uh, the second point I would like to cover today is in terms of the knowledge approach. You see, in Jain philosophy, uh, we talk, say, some Tatar Sutra, first two Sutra, okay, Samyak Darshan, Gyanchari, Trani, Moksha, So all the three things are talked about there. Samyak Darshan, that is right faith, right knowledge, and all those things are talked about there. And uh, uh, so, so to put it simply, there can be many approaches to understand the soul or to practice about soul and so many things. One can be a right faith approach, another thing could be knowledge approach, and third thing could be uh, conduct, charitra. So that's why people say, all the people saying that uh, 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 first you must practice, okay? You should not talk, but you should practice. It's very famous people say. But what a person will practice without knowing? What one will be practicing without knowledge is nothing. It is of no use. Or it may not lead to the uh, benefit that is expected out of it. And so, Kunkunda approach in Samesar is based on knowledge. This point is there in uh, so many Gathas and like that, or everywhere in Gathas, but unless somebody carefully observes, one will not be able to follow it. Out. So that's why I thought uh, I will emphasize this particular point. What Samasar says is that, okay, knowledge is the characteristic of soul, okay, Gyan Darshan Charitra, and so many other properties of the soul. So knowledge is the basic thing that is there in the soul. Uh, soul is made up of knowledge. And hence, what, what is the right material? No? What is the material out of which soul is made up? So then if that is to be answered, it is only nothing but knowledge. Okay? Like the sea is nothing but uh, water, water and water, like that. Agni is nothing, I mean, fire is nothing but water. Uh, it is only fire wherever it is. In the same way, soul is nothing but knowledge. So we can say soul is equal to knowledge. That's what the approach uh, Acharya takes here. There is hardly any difference between soul and knowledge. If you say knowledge, it is soul. And if you say soul, it is knowledge. But somebody will say that we don't have that type of knowledge as uh, Sitir Singhara is having or Siddha Bhagwan is having or Aranth is having or some great Acharya is having and like that. So then the third point comes that, okay, how much knowledge has manifested? Say we have the same knowledge. All species in the universe, a tremendous approach, okay. All species in the universe, all living beings in the universe have the same knowledge okay, in terms of its capacity to know. They have the same potential, okay? same type of knowledge as, 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 
as the power that they have. As we see, even in uh, text, we see knowledge is power. Okay? Seeing everywhere, knowledge is power. Science and everywhere, it is talked about that knowledge is power. And here, Samachar says 2000 years ago that knowledge is power. Okay? Knowledge has to be realized. And so, how much one will be powerful depends on the how much knowledge one has. Okay? If uh, one sense being, two sense being, three sense being, the entire universe is covered here. They have that type of knowledge and that's why they are in that existence. As a human being, whatever our present level of existence, we have a one kind of knowledge. And so, although we have the potential to know every, every, everything in the universe, Keval Gyan, omniscient we can become, our knowledge is very little because we have not developed that knowledge, we have not understood. And so, how to get the knowledge? So, that's why I wrote the third thing, that you experience the soul and knowledge will grow. Okay? Knowledge does not grow by reading books. Knowledge does not grow by observing external objects. Knowledge grows only by experience of the soul. So Samasar say that you experience the soul. Atma ka karo. Only one point that is hammered out all through the Samasar text, any other writings of Kunkun, is that experience the pure soul. Anubhav karo. Only one word. Then of course, if you look a little more into it, then how to experience and like that, of course, knowledge is of two kinds. All of you know very much. Tatwar Sutra would have studied by now. Uh, or if not, even otherwise, in some other text, you would have studied that uh, there is a direct knowledge and there is indirect knowledge. There is a Pratyaksha Gyan and there is a Paroksha Gyan. Matishud Gyan, all those things, you know, five types of knowledge. So Matishud Gyan, uh, Abhigyan and Manaparigyan, they are indirect or what are partly direct, the other thing. Particularly Matishudgyan is indirect and uh, Abhi and Manaparigyan are partially directed and Kevalgyan, the omniscient thing is fully directed. So protection, Paruksh, those kind of things are there. But any knowledge can be direct or indirect depending on the type of one has in our logic uh, books and like that, Nyaya Shastra. They say that even Indriyas have a direct knowledge. Okay. Indriyas through senses we have the direct knowledge. And uh, uh, but there's a different kind of approach. Anyway, the approach here is that of that knowledge. And that knowledge, the eternal knowledge that the Acharya is talking about. Of course, uh, then he said that knowledge, there is a knowledge of the Gyayagbhav, knowing nature. So the whole emphasis in Samasar is that in the sixth Gatha and like that, so uh, knowing nature is the nature of soul. And if you understand the nature of the soul, it is understood. Like a sugar has a nature of sweetness. Okay, So sweetness is the characteristics of uh, sugar. And so wherever in whichever form sugar is there, we know that it is. if it is sweet, any object is sweet, then we know that it's a sugar. I mean, in general, it is like that. In the same way, wherever there is a knowledge, is the soul. So if you know through knowledge, then the soul is working, although we don't know the soul. But if you are hearing, and I'm talking something, and I, I'm looking at the screen and like that, it is all knowledge. Okay? It's all knowledge based. All perceptions are knowledge based. Somebody is good or bad or tall or not, or hearing well, not hearing well, these all perceptions based on knowledge. So all senses, that's why they are called the Jnana Indriyas and like that. So they do the Jnana, okay? they have the knowledge. Okay? And so same knowledge point he has taken, Samasar takes it further and says that, do you have the knowledge of the soul? Okay. So you have the knowledge of the soul. What knowledge we have today is not of soul, but of other objects, external things. So once we have that object, or once we have the knowledge of uh, our own self, then only path to moksha starts. And that's what he calls Gayak Bhav, the knowing nature of the soul. Know the knowing nature of the soul. Samjo apni samachko, whatever we understood, understand who is understanding that. So Gayak Bhav, which is the crux of the samasa, about what Gayak Bhav is like that. And that point, is known as a knowing nature, Gyata Drashta, you would have heard this word many times. 
But what is gather address time is not neutral observer. Neutral observer, yes. But on what basis? So then he says that you know the eternal nature of the soul and then Gaya then only you can observe and that observation is only Gyata Drishta. There can be no Gyata Drishta Bhav or neutral observer kind of a thing unless one has the knowledge of the eternal nature of the soul. So that's the kind of approach uh, uh, Samasar has it. And of course, uh, then Samasar does talk about the, uh, the substance, the Dravya, and uh, its attributes and its modifications, Paryas. And through Paryas, that is the knowledge is of three types. One is the knowledge of substance, knowledge of attributes, and knowledge of modifications. So knowledge can be divided this way also. And then uh, what he says later on, of course, uh, Gyaya Bhav concept says that you do acquire the knowledge of the substance. Okay? And don't get, uh, because knowledge of the attributes is divided. And knowledge of modifications also divides one, one paraya to another paraya, one modification to another modification. And as such, uh, you will not be able to uh, experience the soul. Because which one to experience? Okay, Do we experience modifications, paryay, or do we experience the attributes, or do we experience the substance? So we may have knowledge of attributes and modifications, but what we really experience is the substance. And what we have been doing all these years, in five times in past, we are trying to experience modifications or experience attributes and not experiencing the substance. And why we are not experiencing the substance? Because we don't have the knowledge of the substance. So that's how one, the, the, the main cause of transmigration or main cause of uh, 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 having being born in sansara all the time is that uh, we are not having knowledge of the I thought some question is there. No, it's all right. So uh, that's how it talks about. So this is how the approach to Samasar in terms of based on knowledge. It pursue the knowledge. And then it is there in so many commentaries and so many gathas in Samasar, but then you have to really dig it out. I'm trying to emphasize so that when you read Samasar, try to see the knowledge part approach. Okay, let me put it this way. Samyak Darshan, Gyan and Charitri. Okay. So Samyak Darshan, right faith. Then right knowledge and that right conduct. So conduct cannot take place without having knowledge. And faith can also not take place without having knowledge. So once you have the knowledge, then you have the knowledge of the which object to have a faith in it. That is the real nature of the soul. And uh, then uh, what to uh, what to adopt as a part of conduct, as a part of charitra. So there will be no charitra without knowledge. And there can be no faith without knowledge. Okay. So out of the three which are there, Samyak Darshan, Gyan, Charitra, of course, uh, Samyak Darshan is the first step as we call it. But that does not happen without having some knowledge of the soul. Okay. You cannot experience the soul without having the knowledge of the soul. And so, of course, the path to moksha starts with right faith and like that, darshan, gyan, charitra, like that. But faith itself doesn't take place without having uh, knowledge. Okay, so that's why I generally say that right knowledge and right con uh, right knowledge and right faith or right faith and right knowledge take place simultaneously. Of course, knowledge grows in the uh, manner in which uh, right faith is there. Okay. And conduct also takes place uh, as we have uh, knowledge. Okay. And I always uh, emphasize that point based on some SRM like that, that uh, conduct will take place automatically once you have the right knowledge okay, and faith in it. You have the knowledge and then faith in it. If fire burns, we have the knowledge and then faith in it. Yes, if you put hand into fire, our hand will get burned then will not put hand into fire. Okay? The right conduct will automatically take place. So that's how it has to be understood. I repeat the example again because it's very important. 
that once you have a knowledge, then your faith will develop because uh, faith is based on the knowledge. Okay? And once you have the knowledge, then your conduct will automatically take place. You don't have to have a separate activity for conduct. Okay? So that's why I gave this example that if we know that fire burns, that is knowledge. If that knowledge one have and one really believes in it, one has a real conviction that yes, fire burns, then who will be foolish enough to put hand into fire? Automatically we not put. So conduct will take place in proportion to the faith one has and in proportion to the knowledge one has. Of course, conduct takes place automatically or slowly, but it is it follows the right faith and right knowledge. So this sequence of knowledge or faith, knowledge and conduct need not be changed and we say always no, charitra should be first. You should have a, a good charitra. You should implement whatever you know. Yes, we should implement. It will get automatically implemented if you have a real knowledge. That's what I wanted to see. And that's why some say say that you believe in knowledge and knowledge will take care of everything. If knowledge is not good, then it will not take place. If knowledge is weak, there is no faith in no knowledge. Okay. Actually, faith, faith in the pure soul is right uh, faith. Knowledge of the pure soul is right knowledge. And conduct of the pure soul is right conduct. Okay. So that's how all those things uh, take place. Do not spend more time. It is always like that. And as we as you will study some SR more and more, you will realize that particular point. Then, of course, uh, one comment about auspicious, inauspicious things, that those who observe auspicious practices such as vows, we're talking conduct, okay? Uh, rules of right conduct, austerities and celibacy, etc. But remain without the knowledge of supreme reality will not get liberation. That's what just I said. Hello? Ago. Please unmute him. So, this, uh, no matter how much uh, practices or woes are taken, if there is no knowledge okay, about the reality, the benefit will not flow. That's why sometimes people say, I practice so much thing, I'm doing hundreds of past fastings and so many days, so many fastings, so many rows and like that. And still I am not feeling satisfied. Yes, unless you have knowledge, you will not have experienced the soul. Knowledge is so important. So it is a knowledge approach. It is a modern knowledge also. Science, computers, they are all knowledge based. Everything is knowledge based today. Even uh, uh, whatever they are talking about, artificial intelligence and all this thing. They are all knowledge based. So knowledge, this is what Kumkundachari says long ago there. Even the path to moksha is based on knowledge and not of other things. And the worldly uh, transmigration also takes place because of knowledge of those things. Okay? And lack of knowledge of the pure soul. Anyway, knowledge of the supreme soul is the key to moksha. Okay? It's the key to moksha. And in the absence of contemplation on pure soul, austerities and woes do not result in liberation in terms of childish. Bal Buddhi, Bal Vrat, Bal Tap. That's what some SR says. It is out of this sheer ignorance that people desire auspicious. People don't know about the knowledge. Okay? People don't know about the pure soul. Okay? People don't know that knowledge of the soul is the key to moksha. And that's why in the absence of that knowledge, they pursue the path. Okay, adopt these woes. Okay, do this donation. I'm not saying don't do woes and like that. That's a different thing. One has to do that. But you do it after knowing about it. That's the only thing. If you do it without knowing it, then the fruit will be not, I mean, very negligible. Something like I always say, earning one or two rupees a day, which is not enough for uh, survival. But if you have the knowledge of the pure soul, you earn in terms of crores. Okay? And very fast you move towards the moksha. Okay? So it is out of this sheer ignorance that people desire auspicious deeds which result in births in this mundane world. They do so with erroneous thinking that these punyas will lead to moksha. That's a very erroneous feeling that punyas will lead to moksha and like that. So 
that's how this uh, approach is there. Of course, uh, I think I'm slightly running slow. Okay, so the soul which we are talking about, what kind of knowledge one should have to, so of course, six substances, mode of substances, Dravya Guna Pariyas, no? that we just talked about it, uh, Padwe, Dhruv, and Nayas, and Anekan, modes as to, to interaction of substance. All those things are very important because all those things are around the soul. Okay? Wherever the soul is, there are six substances. Wherever the soul is there, uh, 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 substances are getting modified. I mean, they get modes, different modes and like that. And uh, they are changing every time. And then how to look at them? We need a, a, a viewpoint. And then when we try to understand, of course, uh, every object has infinite properties and like that. So infinite ways of uh, expressing a substance. So we have to know of only count and like that. So many things are there around the soul. Point, if you understand or remember this thing, not important. Point is that there are so many things that are around the soul, but soul has to know its own self to embark on the path of moksha. Without knowing the own self, it is not possible to really embark on the path of the soul. So this knowledge point, I will try to complete in five minutes. Then we'll have question answer. Then we'll go to the third part. Of course, uh, this is part of Samasar also. This is what I just said, okay. Soul is knowledge. And that is right knowledge, which is Samyak Gyan. Knowledge or what is knowable, that is a right faith. That you know the knowable, then there is a right uh, faith, Samyak Darshan. And... Uh, when we know all substances, universe, and behave in a right, that way, charitramis is a very large thing. The universe and all substances behave as per their nature. <clears throat> so the soul should behave as per its own nature. So the conduct of the soul is based on the behavior of the soul and the modifications of the soul takes place. Uh, because of the knowledge of the soul and the faith in the soul. So these three things, the path to moksha as uh, expressed in Samasa and in Kun Kun writings are in terms of these importance. They are same things but explained in a very different manner. Then of course, as I said, there is an inward looking and outward looking type of things. We look outside and external objects and that's why we are in this mundane world. You start looking inward, means know the own soul, know the inner conscious, know all properties of soul, and no knowledge or little karmic bondage will take place in cause of moksha. So turn inward and acquire the knowledge of the inner, that is the soul, inner self, which is the soul, that only can lead to path to moksha and nothing else. That's what it all says. Then, to just to clarify one or two things, that uh, Dev, Guru and Shastra, no much how much you pray God, no much how much scriptures you read, no much how much you respect teachers and pay obeisance to teachers and like that, Gyan does not flow from them. Gyan flows from within. Peace flows from within. So although they are important factors, worshipping God or whatever, reading scriptures or gurus, you know, respecting gurus are important in our day-to-day -day life. Very, very important. I'm not saying, I'm not talking against it, but unless through them, Dev is important because Dev imparts knowledge. Arun Bhagwan is important because they impart knowledge. Shastras are important because they impart knowledge. Gurus are important because they impart knowledge. So it is all knowledge approach, okay? But we respect and uh, do these things without knowing, then that it will not yield the desired results. That's all. That doesn't mean you disrespect them. You continue to respect them, but the fruits will not flow until and unless one knows them well in terms of knowledge. Same thing, austerities and like that, one has to get. Then similarly also, gyan does not flow from other souls. Other souls cannot transfer their knowledge to us. We have to acquire our own knowledge. Okay? We can transfer goods, we can transfer money. No, uh, All those things we can do, but we cannot transfer knowledge. Okay? 
although technology people do say that we transfer the knowledge, but one has to acquire the knowledge to understand the technology by itself automatically it does not transfer. So and six substances in the verse, they also do not lead to knowledge. So at this moment, uh, I will stop for five minutes if you have any questions on this. Otherwise, I will take the third aspect of the lecture, uh, which is on. Uh, which... Sir, I request you to kindly tell them the chapters and the name. In the Samasa, no? Huh? I will do it in the next slide. It is there. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes, I heard. Madam. Okay, okay. That's all good. I will do that in the, when I talk of Nishtha Bhavan, I will take any, uh, roughly each chapter. Oh, no, the number of chapters, how they are arranged. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm trying. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Anybody has any questions at this juncture? You can uh, interact with sir. Anything that you have not understood, any word, any slide, you can ask him, Isha, madam, anybody do else. Really, do you really feel that it is a different approach? Samasar is a different approach here, based on knowledge. Sir, if it is only the knowledge which can take us to the upper level, higher level, then why we have so many temples? There are 5,200 temples, 8,500 temples in India. To impart knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because one does not get attracted to uh, whatever Arant and Siddhas or whatever Tirthankaras. So once we go there and then we know, we acquire, we acknowledge that yes, there was a Mahavir. Mm. There was a Like that we acquired the knowledge. So all knowledge approach. We read scriptures because they impart knowledge. But the real knowledge will come from within. But it is an external uh, way to like a human body keeps healthy by itself, okay. But then there is a medicines to be taken when we are not feeling well. Mm -hmm. like that, we take some medicine, but body heats itself in the same way. Knowledge heals itself, okay. But then sometimes external dose comes through temples, through dev, through shastras, through gurus. So they mm -hmm. have that, and that's why they are there, and that's why we respect them. Thank you. Anybody else has any question? Anything that you have not understood so far? Ma'am, just, uh, just two questions, small questions only. Okay. Jajnin, sir. Uh, sir, one question is, uh, there was written in one slide, uh, Jaisa Kaya and Vaisa Kaya. So, in nutshell, can we say this is law of attraction? Law of? Law of attraction. Jaisa Kaya and Vaisa Kaya. Can we no. say this as a law of attraction or it is different from that? No, not. It's a law of causation, not attraction. Okay. Causation. Okay. Which will take, okay, in, will take more of that. But to answer your question in one line is that if you want to make a milk sweet, then you have mm -hmm. to put sugar in it. Okay? Or if tea you want to make sweet, then you have to put sugar in it. That's all. Without sugar, okay. it cannot become sweet. To mm -hmm. cause, cause of sweetness, what is to be done? Put sugar in it. And if you put sugar into it, it will become sweet. No matter you, you don't like to make it sweet, but if you put sugar, then it will become sweet only. Okay, okay. So causation we can relate it to... Hmm. Yes, sir. Causation means that it will certainly take place, okay? Not okay. ifs and buts. Not ifs and buts, okay? Hmm. Yes, okay. They give this in the same way. So many examples can be given, but you understand this example very well that it will certainly, even if we don't taste, still it has become sweet. Hmm. So in the same way, in the path to moksha, what is the cause? Which Dedication to soul, I understand. So that knowledge, that knowledge is the path. That's why the knowledge approach. 
If you have okay. the knowledge, you will certainly not fail in the path to moksha. But if you don't have that proper knowledge of the self and others, then there is a possibility that we may not achieve the desire or experience the soul. Okay. That's a subject that we have dealt with in Prabhupada, sorry, Niyamsar. So when we talk mm -hmm. about sir, it will be in great detail. Got it, sir. So just one last question. Uh, you said that uh, knowledge comes first before faith, but somewhere around, maybe in some class or maybe in some lectures only, I have heard this, that first of all, being a laity, being a shavak, first of all, uh, we need to have faith over the God. Over the God, maybe that, um, before uh, joining any of the course with uh, um, dear ma'am. Ma'am, actually I was not aware of what is this basically soul is. Ki haan, ek koi cheez consciousness hai, jiske chalte hum it was like that for me only. Mm -hmm. But ek cheez hoti hai ki we, matab, aisa kahin suna ki ek hota, matab, ek it's one of the way only. We can't say that it is only the way, but one of the way that ki right faith say bhi, then right knowledge and then right conduct. Right conduct to definitely it will come by matab, wo by default aega, by having right knowledge and right con, uh, right uh, faith, uh, right conduct apne aap aega, conduct. But right hmm. faith, pehle ho and then right knowledge ho, aisa koi scenario hota hi nahi hai. Pehle hamesha right knowledge hi aati hai, ya phir safe hai ki samay saar ka hum keh sakte hai, ek shaili hai, jis mein hum aisa bolengi ki right knowledge ke baad, then right faith aayega. Yaha hi kehna hai ki, here, right knowledge and right, first thing is that faith will not come without knowledge, I think. But if, what if I have faith over my teacher, or what if I have faith over my Shasta may be. Just make him an atma ko bitakni some jown shasta me, but peko it naki ha, hum jan hai, or hame apne wo jan honepe, wo ekwo faith hai ki ha, bagwane jobi kahe wo such hai. Ab kya kaha hai, wo mene bad me seekna, seeka. Ah, but we say come nature lega, kyoki wo faith is only superficial. Okay, right. That is okay. What you said is okay, and in practice we sometimes we talk about it, but this is superficial. It will be convincing if you have the right knowledge. One thing. Second, yeah. second yeah. point to answer your question is that both knowledge and faith are born together actually. Okay. They are twins. Got it, sir. They are twins. So when there are twins, you say which is first and which is later, that's a different thing. Got it, sir. Got it. You can say knowledge is first, you can say faith is first, but really thing is that both happen together. And uh, in uh, Samasar and like that, this knowledge approach is there largely because saying that, uh, please acquire the right knowledge. Okay. How do we decide it is the right faith without having knowledge? Point. So, the tradition, uh, I say, uh, I, I, actually, I don't want to take more time, but maybe sometime if I get time, I will try to explain. But in one line, let me explain one or two lines. That that Samyakdashin and Charitrani Moksha that have a right faith. That is when the real path to Moksha starts. With Samyakdashin. Samyakdashin. With right path. Real, real path to starts at that point. But before that you acquire knowledge. Okay. So suppose you want to travel from Chennai to Delhi, for example. Faith in Delhi, yes, Delhi exists, Delhi exists, it is not possible. Okay. But it is not enough. You should be convinced that I have to go to Delhi for this particular purpose. Delhi exists, that's a different thing. But for a particular cause, I'm going for attending a marriage or whatever, for an interview or for doing a job, I have to go to Delhi or participate in a conference. Then it becomes a convincing thing. Otherwise, yeah, I want to go to Delhi and like that. So, okay, good idea. But it doesn't lead to action until unless we are convinced. Okay. And that the conviction will come from knowledge. Okay. Got it. Everywhere in life happens like that. Okay. You should have faith in you. So it's a okay, faith. That faith doesn't mean uh, that faith. Okay. The real faith comes only when you achieve that thing. So that's why actually Samadhan and Charitra, all the three are together ultimately. Or even to start with. But uh, Charitra is in a small dose, very, very small dose. While knowledge is also small, but faith is high. So that's why they say 
sometimes knowledge may not be complete. Okay, so then we say that no, no, you should have a faith with you, so that your knowledge will get completed. Like example that suppose you have you feel that yes, I have to go to Delhi tomorrow. For example, I'm just saying. Then you will do all the uh, all the means. I mean, whether flight or this or that, and somehow you will manage to go. That's all. So the in that way it is said that fit, but before that the knowledge should be there. So that aspect is, I mean, which why a statement is made from. We have to understand. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, the thing that is most important is for which uh, Samesar sometimes is uh, blamed <laughs> that it talks of that knowledge, it talks of Nishche, it talks, it doesn't talk of Vevar, and a uh, lot of criticism of Samesar. To start with, I want to say that this is unfounded criticism. Samesar, there is no gatha, no verse which does not talk about uh, Vevar along with it. And for any reason, if it is not mentioned, it would have mentioned in the previous gatha or in the succeeding verse. So there is no difference. I mean, to say that uh, Samesar is a text of Nishte. Is okay, it emphasizes Nishche, but then it doesn't mean that it doesn't talk of Vevar. It does talk of Vevar, but it only says that Vevar does not flow, as I said, without having the knowledge of Nishche. Without the conviction that I want to go to Delhi, that Vevar, that you have to book the tickets or to board the train or board the flight, that will not happen. Knowledge is there all the time otherwise, that Delhi exists. So, anyway. So, uh, what just Manu was mentioning that is how the scheme of chapters is organized in some SREs this way. I, I'm not talking about number here, but uh, you can say there's something like that. There is soul. These are tatwas that I mentioned that you would have studied uh, so far somewhere. That uh, Jeev is there, then Ajeev is there, known soul, then Asur is there, Punnipap. Then Band is there, then Sambar is there, Nijara is there, then Moksh. And in Samesar, there is a chapter called Sarvavishu Dhadika, which is something like uh, what happens in a Moksha. So it can be, I mean, what is the real nature of pure, pure soul, something like that. So Samesar has nine chapters if you look at one way, or ten chapters if you look at another way. The first chapter is sometimes club with the second chapter. And sometimes it is separated in the second chapter. Anyway, so that's how basically nine or ten chapters are there in Samesa, and they become very important in the explanations. In the book uh, that we have done, I mean, written or whatever, next sure. so, chapters are given, of course, nine are given. So, Jeeva Jeeva. Purvaram is not named it, but otherwise it is nine. So if you include Purvaram, then it becomes ten. So depending on classification, sometimes uh, nine or sometimes ten chapters are there in Samesa. And the first chapter is Jeeva Jeev, as we call it. Jeeva and Jeev, these two things are after, after Purvarangi. Purvarangi is not taken into account. Then Karta Karma Dika, that whether we are really doing or not, that's the thing, then Punni Pap things comes. And then after that, uh, Asra and Samvar and Nirjara and Bandh takes place. I mean, Bandh chapter is there, then Moksha and then these things. Okay, so number apart, the basic process is what is given in the table. Based on these uh, nine tattvas. So based on nine tattvas, sometimes they say nine chapters. and then, Doesn't matter that it's a matter of classification and what to include and what not to include. So Samaya Sar has, for practical purpose, 10 chapters, okay. So one is pure, pure soul, and otherwise these you know, nine things are there. Slight variation is there than what is written here, but it is like that. Okay. So what basically Samaya Sar talks with? It talks about soul, 
and then uh, ajeev ashrav all this in these names you would have heard at some other place okay so i will not go into it but i will try to explain what it means okay so samesar says that if you do not have the knowledge of okay, jeev that is soul i look at the second point second column jeev as an external ex- eternal treasure of infinite property that's the soul but we don't know about it we don't know about it the first one the eternal nature of the soul and that is why a jeev things are there because we are not knowing the soul and then since we don't know the soul influx takes place asro takes place and since we don't know that soul we always take pleasure in saying what is punya and what is pap what is good deeds and what is bad deeds the distinction comes and soul is ignored okay as if soul is doing good and bad things okay? and then of course summer summer happens only when the soul we emerges okay doesn't happen without emergence of soul we okay? so influx of karmas they are all when knowledge when we don't talk of knowledge from whatever angle we say it is influx of karmas or uh, whatever bondage of karmas or stoppage of karmas and like that but really speaking it is emergence of soul view and when samvar takes place and when nirjara takes place it is enhanced view of the soul and when moksha takes place it's a complete view of soul and grossment and that engrossment is in the pure pure nature of the soul which is the last chapter in samasa so point i want to explain is there is one one uh, thought that is throughout the samasa is the soul's view okay you look everything from soul's view if you look from karmic view it just title is just if you look from karmic view it is vyavahar okay? and karma do exist so how samasa doesn't talk of vyavahar because karmas do exist everywhere and so it talks of vyavahar and it is there all the chapters are on that basis only so what samasa does is that it explains what is the soul view on each of these aspects because these are roughly chapter names of okay? uh, as some titles differ this one say karta karm the word is not there and then sarvisha dikar there otherwise the same titles of okay? so uh, actually karta karm comes here in asrav and punya pap and like so anyway so this is how the whole thing comes and this uh, karmic influx takes place because of lack of knowledge of the pure soul so we talk of inflow of karmas a good inflow bad inflow and then bondage of karma and things like that so if we explain everything in terms of karma it is vyavahar which is an external things if you explain everything in terms of the soul then it is nishcha very simple definition to understand and follow and samasa does that entire all the chapters are written in this kind of fashion that they will talk about this and uh, they will also talk about uh, is that the point when समय सम्यक दर्शन डाउन यस इट इज लाइक दैट इन देंस दैट वंस वी हैव ए एमरजेंस ऑफ सोल व्यू देन ओनली सम्यक दर्शन टेक्स प्लेस राइट मैडम हैज रेज द गुड क्वेश्चन लाइक दैट बिकॉज वंस यू नो दैट आई एम अ सोल यू विल स्टॉप टेकिंग इंटरेस्ट इन कर्मास they will rise unka uday chalega but you don't take the, you don't i mean you stop taking interest in it and that's why summer takes place and the same view when it's pursued further it becomes a nirjara that you take sanyas or diksha and all those things you try to get away more and more from karma and like that do meditation and all those things and then here also the same thing you just see that uh, the summer which is the starting point okay that takes place only when you have the knowledge okay otherwise not if you don't have the knowledge then these inflow of karmas and all this takes takes place 
after having some migration also inflow will take place but he knows that this is inflow this is not me it is karma and that's why even in a upsarg and like that uh, the munis or whatever monks they do not get perturbed because they know that it's a rise of karmas so it happens all the time in a in a upsarg it happens all the time and so if it can happen in upsarg all the time then we should uh, in our way also we should think like that then we becomes a samyak drishti or what or right faith having right faith so in this chart also right faith does not take place until and unless you are able to stop uh, karma so that type of knowledge should develop and that knowledge should have that these nine tatvas every tatva has to be understood in terms of or padarth what are they call it in terms of the soul and in terms of a uh, karmic view so this is knowledge approach that knowledge approach comes in the tatva as also that uh, knowledge of tatva is very important and if we know the soul then we'll know the uh, tatva as very well if we don't know the soul then of course we've been knowing only names of tatva but not really fact of the tatva so that's how it has to be understood and realized then only one can uh, go further in the path to moksha so these are roughly chapters about 10 chapters that are there and then each chapter is viewed in terms of the nature of pure soul and the knowledge of pure soul so that's why some of us say that knowledge is the key to moksha and like that if we expand this uh, concept little more in terms of few points here then what is nishchay and vaiva nishchay talks of real if i take one point it talks of real while vaiva talks of what is associated things not so real because they are based on karma apparently they look real but they are not real okay similarly nishchayna is always based on soul based it is soul based while veva is talked about karma based nishchayna is bhutarth as we call it so it is a true one and veva is a bhutarth means it is it doesn't help it's not true it is there it is observed but it is not true it is seen but it is not true the nishchay talks about the nature of substance while veva talks about the other things other than the nature of substance nishchay takes the disassociated view of this substance while veva takes the associated views of the substance in the same way nishchay is independent every substance is independent so you take an independent view of the sub object then it becomes nishchay and you take a dependent view on the thing that this depends on that then it becomes veva our life dep- our human birth depends on karmas then we are talking of veva and nobody can escape veva because veva is always there so long as this human body is there veva is always there so it, it is not true to say that samasa does not deal with it but it deals it separates it separates our activities of uh, path to moksha in terms of what is to be observed as karmas and what is to be viewed as a soul because it wanted to emphasize you see what is happening is that whatever we are observing today it is a mixed observation in which we think that i am a soul and i am doing punyas so it's a mixed observation punyas or paths they are based on karma okay they are karmic activities but we are mixing it with the soul which is knowledge okay same thing in every uh, element it is there and so this mixing or same thing we'll mix with the crude man maya of anger and so many things like that and that's why we'll not have a pure view of the soul what we'll have is distorted view of the soul as if soul soul is doing everything so that's how it has to be understood that's independent thing indivisible okay nishchay is indivisible goal is not divisible target goal is not divisible indivisible but in a, 
karmas, we can divide and talk about it and like that. And uh, nishta is something to be adopted, while vevar is something of their external. Nishta establishes the fundamentals, while vevar talks of peripheral or external things. Uh, nishta says that uh, doer and deed are inseparable. While we are, we divide and say that this is the deed and this is the person who has done this thing. So like that, they make a division or some work has been done by that. Then Nishta is based on experience and uh, Vevar is not based on experience, it is based on observations. And Nishta is something to be convinced, to be believed. And uh, Vevar is something which is observed, so it need not be believed. You see, you say whatever is seen, that's all. And whatever is seen is considered the truth, which is not. And then, of course, uh, Nishtya goes beyond all viewpoints. Okay. We are always, uh, 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 when we talk about any viewpoint, then it is a Vevar. But without any viewpoint, if you look at the absolute reality, then it becomes a Nishtya. So, it's a very uh, simple concept, actually that distinguishes between, in any act, it distinguishes between the soul and the karmas. And that's how one has to discriminate Vedvigyan, Vedvigyan, science of differentiation. And if you do not differentiate, how do we get some aggression? How do we get right faith? And that knowledge only helps in differentiation. If there is no knowledge, we cannot differentiate. So that's how Nishtya and Veva, they are always there. But what we have to adopt is Nishtya and not Veva. That's all for our final goal, final target. Nishtya is more important. Means, important means to be followed. So we look at the karmas that are happening in life, or we look at ourselves as a human being, which is a product of karma. The body is a product of karma. But that is apart. Apart from that, we look that I am a soul. And when, uh, when I look at Ameko Khalishad, the 38th Gata, yeah, I'm a pure soul. Once we start looking at that, then the soul, 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 and soul, and karmas, karmas, and karmas, they are different. Like Gehu Binte, to Gehu or Chaval, sorry, Gehu or Kankara Lag Dikta. No, to observe it, they are separate. Stones or other things are there small stones and like that. They are different than the wheat. So then what is to be adopted is a gehu and not the kankara, not the stones. So you separate them. That's all. That's all Nishan Vavar is about. That the things that we have are mixed things and then we take the real part with us and the associated part, it's separated. So, but Nishtha cannot be separated. Vevar can be separated. Nishtha cannot be separated. Means uh, you cannot uh, take a conquered and then do it. Like that, so many examples can be given. Uh, suppose we have to weigh one kilo gold with one kilo some weight, no? that bart, weighing machine or something like that. In olden Taraju, no? you have two sides. In the one side, you put the weight. Uh, measurement and the other side you are putting gold or water or some article. So then what happens? Ultimately there is a weighing machine that is on the one side that weight is there, say one kg weight and other side one kg gold. So we say that we impose that thing that weight we impose on the gold and say that it is one kg gold. But when we have to take it away the the way weight will be left there measurement of weight will be left there. It may be made of iron or may be made of uh, some copper or water, petal or some, some, some object or even of stone. So that is left and you take away that thing. That happens even when you are buying vegetables. That happens no matter what are you doing. So measurement, karmas are a measurement. Okay. The measurement is different than the real thing. Measuring device. 
is different than the real thing. So measuring device is karma and the real thing is pure soul. That's how we have to understand. If you understand that way, things become very clear and we don't have any uh, uh, excuses or say that this is good or this is bad and things like that. The king and the real material. Something ornaments or something you buy. For example, some uh, necklace made of uh, diamonds or whatever. Then the packing will be beautiful. No? Packing is also good. But packing is not diamond. So packing is Veva and the real thing inside is diamond necklace or whatever it is. So whenever we observe the things, two things are there. So one has to have a knowledge of packing. Knowledge that separates packing from the real thing. Mithai ka dibba, same way. Mithai is different than the dibba, okay? the packet or the box in which a sweet is put. So that's all, it is so simple, okay? People are unnecessarily confusing and trying to create a confusion that uh, what is this? We need Veva, we don't, we, who said we don't need Veva? Nobody will say that we don't need Veva. And nobody can say so long as we have existence or even in a case of Siddha's state also, there is a Veva in a particular manner, absence of karma and like that. So it is always there. But what Samasa talks about always distinguish between the two. So when you're buying a sweet packet, you distinguish between two. Are not even sweet packet, even if you buy a banana, you distinguish between the skin and the real material inside, okay? And you eat what is worth eating, okay? So the stuff inside, which is called banana that we eat is niche, and the cover or whatever yellow color cover is that we don't eat is Veva. Because it cannot come, banana that is available in market cannot come without it. So you observe the nature also, it is like that. So Veva and Nishtha are built in the nature also. It is built in everywhere. Because six substances are there everywhere. So when we have to understand the pure soul, we have to understand what is real and what is not real. So that is the only way to understand uh, but the only thing is when we have to adopt, when we have to eat, when we have to buy, we talk of nishte and not of what is the use as a Veva. So this type of very clarity is necessary to understand Samasar and really pursue the path. So conviction is, uh, you were asking Madam Little while ago, I don't know your name because it is written genealogy gen. So whatever it is. So but uh, oh, Nancy, Jim. Nancy, Nancy, yeah. okay, okay, you are helping in some talks sometimes. Yes, sir. Okay, sometimes very good. Only. So nice. You are very helpful some days when there was some problem. Anyway, so the point is that they are always there, but we have to be aware of what is what, okay, and then adopt what is good for us. So that's what Samasar says, that things are mixed in this life. Everything is available. Six substances operate, asara of somewhere, sorry, asara and all those things are there. And that's why karmas are there, karmic bondage is there. So you have to distinguish and separate the two in imagination. Sometimes we may not be able to separate, okay, but separate first in imagination, then actually, what is moksha? Moksha is separation of karma from soul, no? So karma becomes a vevar. So vevar is given up and nishta is adopted, soul is adopted all the time. That is a liberation, that is moksha. And partial uh, adoption of, uh, not partial, adoption is full, a partial destruction of karma, gati karma, whatever, is a state of aran. So it is all the way nishta and vevar. The aran bhagavan, there is a nishta and vevar. Nishta is a constantly en engrossed in the pure soul and Vevar is that he has uh, destroyed four Gati Karmas. So there is nothing that cannot be explained I mean, without uh, Vevar. Like, sorry, sir. there is 
nothing that cannot be explained without vevar also it is always there so there is no question of giving up a vevar and not taking up giving up means giving less importance to it you give more importance you give more importance to gold or the thing that is weighted rather than the weighing machine okay that's all it is okay because the value is different okay the value of a measurement may be small okay the value of gold may be very high okay so it has to be understood that way and that is the way we should do. okay so just a few characteristics of soul try to mention it because that object object of uh, uh, nishtay how to view the object of nishtay so what is the real thing that is soul okay so samay sar says that all this uh, talking about color that color is a part of pudgal and not of soul smell part of pudgal not of soul taste part of soul sorry part of pudgal not of soul touch sparsh part of soul so that is all veva part of sorry part of uh, karma and not of soul okay. so in each each of these activities what is happening is uh, what the soul does then soul has a knowledge of color soul has the knowledge of smell soul has a knowledge of taste so when we eat anything or we observe any color and color combinations and like that the knowledge part is that belongs to soul and the other thing uh, eyes and other things which help in making some external decisions or if you buy something it is not soul it is on the karma zone one gets guided by karma so there's how one can separate each thing okay between nishchay and vyavar and then try to realize the pure soul so samesha does not talk of pure soul only but it says the way how to realize the pure soul and it is a text fully devoted to how to realize same thing uh, without body when we talk of body it is a karmic thing and so it is a veva but when we talk of soul it is without body it is without any shape it is without any skeletal structures there are no bones in the soul bones are part of the body which arises due to karmic substances same thing attachment is due to ignorance and uh, aversion like that soul is without attachment without aversion without any delusion more it is without any inflow of karmas inflows of karmas are there in the karmic substances which is body here soul doesn't have a bondage and uh, suppose you have some bondage around the what are around the hand here has the bondage been created you may put some say wrist watch or whatever put a handcuff or something like that but then hand remains a hand okay only some freedom is remained so we have to distinguish that that's all okay putting a cuff here is only or any obstacle that a any ring or that mat is an is an external thing okay but the hand is a hand okay? only some freedom is uh, obstructed because of that but otherwise uh, it has not entered into the hand it has not entered into hand or if you put a glass no we are putting glasses and like that glasses have not entered the eyes they are separate so having glasses is something called uh, okay external things and eye sight is something like uh, what are another instrument eyes are another instrument and knowledge is there in the eyes no knowledge it is knowledge of the soul okay eyes do not see 
soul only sees because knowledge part belongs to soul okay so we have to distinguish this thing and that's why this distinction is made not to decry somebody or give more importance to somebody like no not that way it is the reality of life reality of our existence that our reality has to be understood both in terms of uh, uh, what is happening outside of what is observed and what is real if we live in the house doesn't mean that we are uh, we are uh, whatever we are uh, some bondage of the house there is nothing like bondage like okay? the house arrest and like that sometimes they call it person has been house arrested so it is arrest means what nothing the house arrest is nothing or even other arrest is also nothing as far as the substance is concerned only some external object is creating some problem that's it is a problem in one obstacle created anyway so the point is that soul is without karmas while veva talks of karmas soul is without uh, vargana karmic particles and so many things soul is without it and that's why soul is without any for the all karmic particles anubhav yoga soul doesn't need a yoga yoga is only man vachan ka no bondage no fusion of karma no margna stan no duration no sanklesh bhav no gun stan last no gun stan we talk of gun stan path of progression and all those things qualitative stages in the development of the soul but the uh, soul doesn't have that gun stan it is only because of karmas it is explained soul is only engrossment there is a degree of eng- engrossment atma linta that varies and that variation is explained through gun stan otherwise not so point is that it is inescapable that we can talk only of karma and not talk of soul okay so all those scriptures which were talking only of karmas kund kund have made it by some asar and other scriptures that you talk both in terms of soul and karmas so those who have knowledge only of karmas and not of soul they oppose it why you are talking of soul you talk of karmas okay but some asar say that you have to understand both okay and adopt what is right for you that's how it advocates the knowledge knowledge holds only in discrimination jehu aur kankar ka jo knowledge hai that only helps in removing kankars removing stones from wheat otherwise it will harm us like that one has to understand the path to moksha and that is all all samas are about it so in terms of the tradition the difference is made in terms of uh, including uh soul as one of the variables if you call it some mathematical or what or sometimes that other uh, earlier soul was a, as a passive factor it was included kunkunda chair says no this is the main thing you would include it doesn't mean that karmas are not there karmas are there okay, but there is a different substance so there's how the whole things that takes place i think of time is running out so okay this is the last slide i would call it last so what it says is that even liberation the final objective no, has to be achieved achieved in terms of a uh, uh, soul without knowledge of soul nobody can achieve salvation just we said no you have to light the lamp and then the darkness goes away in the same way you light the lamp of soul and then the karmas will go so destruction of karmas sequence of bondage is there because we are engrossed with other things monday thing the psychic activities and then uh, sorry uh, that leads to monday existence and infinite cycle of birth and death and sequence of liberation also that you get same way we are engrossed with other objects you should get engrossed with the sorry engrossed with the psychic activities or absence of psychic activities with karmic bondage is absence of karmic bondage it is ab- with body activities absence of body related karmas and it is liberation which is moksh no birth and no deaths while in mundane world there is birth and death 
So, Samesar emphasizes that you understand both. What is the sequence of bondage and what is the sequence of liberation? Then only your final objective of uh, attainment of moksha is possible. Otherwise not. If somebody thinks that I can destroy the karmas or eliminate karmas without having knowledge of soul, no, it is not possible. Because only when we distinguish between the soul and the non-soul material, it is possible to eliminate. Without having the knowledge that the two are mixed together, we will not know how to separate it. Okay. So that's how knowledge becomes important in the process of liberation. Knowledge of both bondage and as well as knowledge of both Vevar and Nishchaya, that becomes important. And without that knowledge, one will not be able to attain the liberations. So finally, to conclude what we discussed today, that uh, one observes that Samasari is like a temple where the pure soul has been confiscated. Somebody asked question about the temple, why temple? This Samasari is also a temple. Okay? In words, the idol is made. Okay, Idol of pure soul is made. And so just as in temple we respect uh, the idol, actually we respect the pure soul. When we go to Tirthankar Mahavir or whatever in a temple, that all means that uh, you go to the pure soul, okay, which they have attained. So even if somebody goes to Shikhar Jain like that, it all means that, okay, that's a place where Parshanath Bhagavan has attained the liberation. But then the soul exists on the top of the I mean, 90 degree above that particular place of Parashnath Hill. So from Vevar angle, it is that place, okay, Charan Paduka or whatever. But 90 degree above up in the space in the Siddhishila, the same Parashnath lives. So how can you think of paying obeisance to Parashnath? Without knowing that he exists in the, he exists even today. Body does not exist, but the soul exists in the Siddhi Siddha. So that conviction will give so much, uh, that is the faith. Okay? Faith Okay, I can both in both the power that will be different. I think. That question is uh, Slightly different. Anyway, all items are mentioned. Do you mean to say that soul is mentioned as the item? Anyway, I will not take up that subject. It's slightly different. Okay, so then the soul becomes the item. If, if Madam's question is okay, soul becomes the item. Okay, okay so these are 415 verses that uh, they are there in Samasar. They really inspire us to realize, know, and experience our own soul. Then faith in samasar, that is, samasar, the word and meaning of samasar is Shuddha Atma, pure soul. Samay means substance and sar, or samay means atma, or soul, and sar means the pure soul. So faith in samasar is the right faith. Its knowledge is right knowledge and its experience is right conduct. By doing fasting, what do we do? We experience the right conduct, okay, right conduct, experience the soul. What does Muni do? Okay. What does Aran Paramatma do? They experience the soul. What does the Siddha Paramatma do? Experience the soul. So Siddha Paramatma is at the right, if you at all, use at all. But conduct is the word used in terms of karmas. It's beyond conduct. Okay. So, Samasar says that this is all. Okay. Pure soul is the key point, is the master key to understand any concept in Jain philosophy. Whether it is an account, whether it is any concept, whether it is violence, ahimsa, hinsa, anything, donations, dham, tapasya. Tapasya is nothing but uh, engrossment in the pure soul. 
So everything that is taught has to be understood in terms of karmas and in terms of its real nature, which is so. Otherwise, the thing will not take place. I mean, the benefit will not take place. So understand everything in terms of these things. And uh, that's what the last point here is that it, you have to take a transcendental view. Of you cannot take the view as you observe. Okay? Because what we observe is only karmic. Whatever we observe is karmic or it is pudgal. Whatever you observe, just remember anything you observe is karmic or pudgal, whatever you see. So basically pudgal, non-living thing, atoms, whatever. Whatever is colors of the sky you see, that is nothing but pudgal, atoms only. So take a transcendental view. You have to go beyond and understand it. Whether it is uh, charitra, whether it is conduct or whether it is anything, you have to go beyond the karmas and understand the soul. Everywhere you have to go beyond it. This 144 verse Gatha talks about it. So you have to take a transcendental view to understand anything that we want to really understand. Otherwise, our knowledge will not be uh, full okay, and will not be complete okay, because you are having partial knowledge of karmas only. You are talking about karmas only, not talking about soul. That is the biggest crime because it is soul. Ignorance of the soul that has led to the karmic bondage. Okay. And this ignorance has been there for infinite in the past. That is why we are in this world. Okay. Anadi kal se atma ko nahi jana that's why we are having Janam Maran. So that mistake we have done for billions and billions of years, this is the life to correct that mistake. And know what is right. We have to understand karma, but when we look at these, they are, we ignore it. We peel the banana if you want to eat it. It has to be removed. Cover has to be removed. You cannot eat sweets with the package or the box or with the packing. It has to be separated. In the same way, karmas provide packing to the our say human body or our thoughts and like that. And if you really understand the real substance is only pure soul. So we have to take a transcendental view not believe what we are seeing and then realize this pure soul and thus samasar is a reality a real concept a text this par excellence there is no comparison to the text of samasar in this universe this is called as the king of scriptures okay? so you are so lucky that you are studying this course I wish you all the best and try to understand the nature of soul through this text. And you are really for I am not just for praising or not. Why do you have to praise? Okay. The subject of praising the soul itself is good enough. Okay. So this is only to make sure that uh, all of you understand it well. And it is it, it it doesn't it talks about soul. And soul is not any view, no. I mean, doesn't belong to any group, no. That's why religion is a common thing for everybody. Even an ant is a soul, whatever, a tree is a soul, human being is a soul, Hindu is a soul, Muslim is a soul, Christians are a soul. They're all souls. So there is nothing very specific about Jain, Jainism as such. It is about soul. Like a doctor talks about a body. A doc doctor treats anybody as a body, whether whatever philosophy or religion one pursues. In the same way, Samasa treats everybody as a soul. And that's why in the initial Manglachar and like that, even no Tirthankar is remembered. Okay? No person is remembered. Just as doctor looks everybody as a patient and gives the medicine. In the same way, Acharya looks everybody as a patient of uh, births and deaths. And that's why the prescription is that you understand the pure soul 
and that anyway i'll stop at this time is running out so all the best to any one or two questions uh, thank you sir thank you sir. i think thank you is a very small word we'll have to invent some new word <laughs> uh, thank you so much sir, for uh, having blessed us with all the uh, wisdom and i hope all the students have followed or with all the striking examples and the slides uh, we appreciate uh, sir's efforts and your participation and i hope you all will understand the essence of samsar and take it forward we'll just take two questions and uh, we'll look forward uh, to sir's uh, lectures in the upcoming weeks yes two people i i'll request new people to interact you can introduce yourself and you can ask am i audible yeah, yes ma'am yes ma'am ha oh yes uh yes who's raised the hand please raise your hand yes ma'am yes. are you yes sir sir uh, i have <clears throat> i think we have discussed in this uh, lecture and i have asked uh, uh, in different questions like classes as well so sir we say that you uh, nancy also asked that question that uh, you know through with knowledge we'll get the right faith uh, but we everybody keeps reading samasar and everybody has been gone through multiple times but what is that thing you know that this knowledge is not we are not able to convert into right faith or 100% faith that what we what we say so we are not able to attain that so what is what is the main thing which you think is blocking us to attain that complete knowledge or conviction about knowledge that this knowledge is right we know right, about sir. aranth we know about aranth and sit but we have not decided that we want to become aranth and sit that's the difference so that knowledge is of that knowledge has not worked it has not yielded that result yet it may yield in future lives i'm not saying that but if you're convinced today you is anybody if is convinced today that yes this is the only thing i have to do then it will come when we'll go to moksha in this life or next life it's not possible this maybe next time but first the conviction should take place that yes i want to go decision should be made that's the thing thank you sir that was a very important question and a very nice one that we all Sir, need to the question on say i answered short in a short manner but it's the best question so rahul is also here sir yeah i could see that okay <laughs> it's always a great uh, you know uh, thing that ab se hum log jo we are asking lot of different different examples we understand from you in the different text like in labdi sir you explain it differently here you explain it differently and last year when you took the same session for us for our batch your examples and your slides would be different so it's always a pleasure uh, to listen from you about samay sir but mm -hmm. sir my question is <clears throat> ki whenever we are you know reading the samay sir we we are intact with this and we believe that this is the reality but once we go back to our original life we again mixed up with everything and we will do the same what we are doing it before the class so this is because of the uh, like because we have the heaps of karmas with us this is happening because of that or what ayush uh, is just now said that uh, bhaiya said that because of that reason that we still not have the conviction of the purity thing that's why we are doing that right right this correct it we are, of course heap of karmas are there and that's why we are in this uh, mundane world but unless we that uh, that lamp of light that i am a pure soul it is not possible to achieve the final results it's it's not only in terms of words okay 
You see, there are three things if I answer for take one or two minutes to answer that. One is the word, no? like pure soul word. Then the idea that goes behind that word, that it is a soul that is a knowing substance. And the third is to go beyond that and realize and experience the real substance of it. So what is happening to us is that yes, we have acquired some knowledge of it, but that knowledge is based on terms of vocabulary. Earlier we did not know the term pure soul, now we have acquired the knowledge of the word pure soul. So that type of knowledge is there, which is good. I'm not saying that it's bad and like that, which is good. But then the next step is to understand what the soul is all about. Not in words, but in terms of bhav. And all we say that in Jain philosophy, bhavs are important and like that. Yes. What bhav? That pure soul has a gyayak bhav. Okay. That has to be understood. And after understanding that, the third stage is uh, experiencing it. That's what Kund Kund in this uh, Samesa or whatever, as I said, 144 Gata and like that. It says that you have to go beyond. Is Samesa talks of third uh, third stage. Okay. First stage, uh, okay, um, good or bad, Nishche and Veva, for example. One stage is you believe in Nishche, say in soul. Second thing is you believe in Veva, okay. But Kun Kun says, no, you have to go to the third stage where you forget about uh, what uh, Nishche talks about it and what uh, Veva talks about it and you experience the soul. So knowing, uh, I mean, if I understand your question, well, I will say that we have understood the two stages. We have crossed two stages. But the third and the final stage where we have to experience the soul, that we have not come to. So whatever we are doing in terms of classes and like that, putting all our, it's very good. I mean, it's not to be uh, uh, put on a lower key and like that. It's a great thing. But then we have to go to the third stage of Tisri Bhumika, they use the word in some aside in so many gathas. You have to go to the third stage, Tisri Bhumika. Same way, Pap and Punya, two sides. So you give up Pap and take a Punya. Okay. Then Kun Kun says, no, you go to third stage. It doesn't say that Pap is bad or whatever. Uh, that is, Pap is always bad, okay, not, not to be adopted and like that. And Punya is always good. There is no point about it. But then he says, Beyond the thought of Pap and Pund, you realize the pure soul. That's the third stage. So in all the chapters, okay, you talk of Samvar, Nijara, Moksha, is you go to the third stage, okay. Even if you have to ex talk about Moksha or Moksha, whatever you express, then okay, we say that there is a soul and there is a, a karmic bondage that is eliminated. Eight karmas are gone. Then what? Third stage experiencing the soul forever. And how can I realize that that third stage has to be achieved? That's the crux of Samasa. Always say that don't get into two points, get into the third point. Yes, anything further? Thank you, sir. Perfectly answered. We always indulge in the first two steps, I think. We never thought of the third step, in fact. Exactly, that's what Samasa is. That's why I said no? transcendental view in that last slide I was saying. Take a transcendental view. That's the third stage. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, folks, for interacting with sir. Uh, sir, next, when do we meet, sir? Thursday or Saturday, sir? Okay, bro. whichever way you think, it's okay as far as. No, uh, all the if students change it. No, Thursday is okay, but it's, uh, Saturday. Thursday is better, I think. Okay, so Thursday, 7.30 to 9.30, we'll be here for the Pravachan Sar text, sir. Or you want to complete some two lectures you were saying, no? What do you say? was two hours. If you have one more uh, session for Samesar, you can take Samesar, sir. Oh, no. It is you can take. No, I was just thinking, trying to concentrate on the uh, second part, which is in terms of 
properties of the soul that only it can it will take samay sar itself sir then samay sar itself one more lecture samay sar itself you're saying that i heard the two lectures so, so you mean two hours is two lectures okay. no no you can you can do it either way sir no, no hard and fast rule it all depends on how the students hmm. are benefited so we can so, have both can take that on. thing later first we'll take we have to do one more lecture samay sar continuation of this lecture sir thursday uh, we we'll send the message to continue little more okay okay yeah ठीक है सर तो मैम जस्ट वन थिंग मैम जस्ट वन थिंग आई वुड मैम जस्ट वन थिंग आई वुड लाइक टू से मैम बिकॉज ऐसा पोडियम फिर मुझे नहीं मिलेगा आई वॉन्ट इंटरेक्ट विद अदर बैच इज स्टूडेंट्स डेट्स वाई आई वॉन्ट टू से हेयर एंड विद जयंती सर एज वेल एंड यू एज वेल मैम सुमत प्रकाश जी पंडित जी सुमत प्रकाश जी इज कमिंग टू वर्ड ओद एट माई हाउस ओनली uh for three days so whosoever want to uh, learn or want to take uh, participation in swadhyay so please come here you all are most welcome 18th uh, late evening he is coming by 130 and by 21st evening late evening he is here only in vadodara gujarat so you all oh, that's are welcome wonderful. that's wonderful please give him our regards and our pranam definitely ma'am and tell him about your experience yeah. over here sure yeah, ma'am sure he has visited, all, all he has visited the uh, university yes he yes. visited yeah, i yeah. but he, he knows well about all, it all, all because of sir and other people here right. they found a friend in him also that's nice that he's coming to your house we really feel jealous hamare bhagya nahi hai ki ab unko apne ghar bula sake नो मैम मेरे भी भाग्य नहीं है वो तो हस्बैंड जुड़े हुए हैं इसलिए बाकी मेरे भी ऐसे कोई भाग्य नहीं है मतलब ऑब्वियसली भाग्य है पर मेरा ऐसा कोई कर्म नहीं है कि मैं उनको ऐसे बुला पाती नहीं कर्म ही है ना वही भाग्य है कर्म का ही तो उदय अपॉर्चुनिटी ओके सो वी वाइंड अप सो वी डू द जिनवाणी स्तुति सर ओके सो थैंक यू ऑल अगेन निज में भी निज में बताई यह अनंत उपकार उसके लिए जिन वाणी माँ को वंदना शतार थैंक यू सर थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू सो मच